Now, as we all know, the Java platform provides us with many ways to start a thread and manage it. In this lecture, we will briefly go through some of the options that we have for concurrent programming in Java. We will introduce the concept of structured concurrency and then talk about a set of preview classes in Java 21, which makes it easy for us to write structurally concurrent code. This will make it extremely easy for us to think about splitting a task into subtasks, execute them, collect their results, and then finally manipulate the results. Here's one way to start a platform thread using a Lambda expression. From Java 21 onwards, we now have two types of threads. The platform threads, which is really another name for the threads we have been using till now. And virtual threads, which I have a completely different YouTube video. You should certainly check that out before this video. It'll give you a great idea about virtual thread. The code on the screen is pretty straightforward. At the end of the statement, there will be two threads, the parent thread and another thread which executes the sleep. Of course, you can put any business logic here. But there are some big problems with this approach. For one, creating a platform thread is actually expensive. Secondly, if there are a large number of users for the application, the number of platform threads can grow beyond the limit that is supported in the JVM, and that will ultimately crash the JVM. Not surprisingly, most application servers tell us not to create our own threads so they can manage the threads on their own. So let's move on to the next approach of concurrent programming called Java Futures. Java Future was introduced in JDK 5, and here we as developers need to change our style of thinking. Instead of thinking about starting a new thread, we now think in terms of submitting a task for execution to a thread pool. JDK 5 also introduced the concept of executor service where these tasks would be submitted. Executor service is the Java interface which defines a mechanism to submit a task and return a Java future. How do we define a task in Java? Any class that implements either a runnable interface or a callable interface is nothing but a task. What you see on the screen is an example of a callable task being submitted to an executor service, which represents a single threaded thread pool. In other words, a single task would be executed at a time because it's going to run on only one single thread. Now you can also see a future object being returned. A good way to think about a future object is to think about it as a reference to a submitted task, which is executing in some thread pool. Using this reference, you can wait for the result using the get method or cancel the task altogether. You have some control in managing that running task. We see in the example above the call to future.get to return the output of the submitted task. Now let's take an example of multiple tasks being submitted to an executor service. Here's how it works. In the example, we create a new executor service which executes three tasks on a fixed thread pool of size three. Each time a task is submitted, a future is returned, future one, future two, and future three. Note that all of these tasks will run in parallel and the parent thread can then retrieve the results of each task using the future.get method. You see that on the screen. But there are problems with this implementation. If the platform thread is being used in this code, then there is definitely a problem. The get methods to retrieve the task result will block the thread. And this can be expensive because of the scalability concerns that we had already talked about. But note here that with Java 21, if you use virtual threads, the blocking problem does not exist. Because when we call the get method, the underlying platform thread is released. There are a few other problems. If task two and task three happen to complete before task one, then we have to wait till task one completes and then handle the results for task two and task three. The problem gets even worse for cases when task two or task three fail. Assuming that the entire use case should fail if any one of the tasks fail, 
the code would have to wait till task one completes. Remember, it is waiting on that get, which is blocking. And then it will throw an exception. This is really not ideal and it will create a very sluggish experience for the end user. Now, what's the root cause of the problem here? The fundamental problem with this implementation is that the executor service class has no knowledge of the relationships between the various tasks which are submitted to it. Because of this, it does not know what to do if one of the tasks fail. In other words, the three submitted tasks in the example are not considered as part of a single use case. They are considered as independent tasks. Now, this is not really a failure of the executor service class because it's not designed to handle any relationships among the tasks. You will notice, however, there's another problem. We use a try with resources block around the use of the executor service. This makes sure that the executor service close method is called when the try block exits. Right over here. The close method makes sure that all of the tasks submitted to the executor service will terminate before proceeding further. If our use case demands that it should fail immediately when any one of the tasks fail, then we are out of luck. The close method will wait, as we mentioned, till all of the submitted tasks are completed. However, if we do not use the try with resources block, then we do not guarantee that all three tasks end before the block exits. There will remain runaway threads which are not cleanly terminated. So extra complicated programming would be necessary to achieve this if we do not use the try with resources block. So even though using Java future is a nice improvement over here, it does not go far enough. But note that one of the problems of Java futures which exists for platform threads, namely the blocking problem, does not exist with virtual threads. We mentioned this already, but it's worth repeating. When virtual threads are used, blocking the thread using the future.get method will simply release the underlying platform thread. This is a good thing. Now the blocking problem can also be solved by using completable future pipelines. But we are not going to get into that. We have a far simpler way to solve the blocking problem with Java 21. We can simply use virtual threads. But somehow we need to find a better solution to handle use cases that can be split into multiple subtasks. And this brings us to the fundamental idea of structured concurrency. Now here on the screen, you see a task which is submitted to an executor service from within a method. And then the method exits because it's asynchronous. It's now difficult to reason about our code because we do not know when the submitted task might have side effects and this can create hard to debug problems. The basic idea of structured concurrency is that all tasks which are started from within a block, maybe a method or a try catch block, should terminate when the block ends. In other words, the structural boundary of the code as you see and the runtime boundary of the tasks which are submitted from within that block coincide. This makes the application code easier to read because the effects of the tasks submitted within a block are constrained within that block. When looking at any piece of code outside of the block, we do not have to really worry if the tasks might still be running. So the try with resources block for executor service is a good first attempt at structured concurrency, but it does not go far enough because it can lead to a scenario where the parent thread is waiting for more time than necessary. So let's look at the next improvement called the structured task scope. In Java 21, virtual threads was introduced as a feature which practically removes the blocking problem in most cases. But even with the use of virtual threads and futures, the problem of not cleanly terminating the threads and waiting for more time than necessary still exists. The structured task scope class and a few other related classes have been introduced in Java 21 as a preview feature to solve this particular problem. It attempts to provide a much cleaner model of structured concurrency 
than the use of try with resources block in the executor service. The structured task scope classes know the relationship between the tasks which are submitted and hence it can make some intelligent assumptions about them. Let's take a look at the example on the screen. We create a new task scope out here. The static method returns an instance of task scope which will basically cancel all remaining running children if any one of them fails. Now that's what I mean by saying it knows the relationship between the tasks. Here in the example, imagine a typical enterprise use case where two tasks can run in parallel, the DB task and a REST API task. Now the idea is to run these tasks concurrently and then consolidate the results into a single object and return it. We use the fork method of the structured task scope object to run the two tasks in parallel, much like the submit method in the executor service. Under the hood, the structured task scope class uses virtual threads by default. It will start a new virtual thread every time you fork a particular task. Now we go forward and call the join method on the scope to wait till both the tasks are complete. But more importantly, in case one task fails, the join method will send a cancellation request automatically to all the other tasks and wait till they all are terminated. This is important because the cancellation request will make sure there are no unnecessary hanging tasks when the block exits. Now what happens if some other thread sends a cancellation request to the parent itself? In that case too, cancellation request will be sent to the child threads. Finally, if there's an exception from anywhere inside the block, the close method of the structured task code, which is run as a part of try with resources, will make sure that the cancellation requests are sent to the child tasks and those tasks are terminated as well. The beauty of structured task scope implementation is that if a child thread creates its own structured task scope, then they all are handled cleanly during cancellation. So in other words, if you have a task which submits or forks multiple subtasks, and if those subtasks submit multiple subtasks, those are all handled very neatly during the cancellation request. As a caution though, because we are talking about cancellation, there is a special responsibility for the developers here. The developers here need to make sure that the task that they write must handle the interrupt flag that is set on the thread. It's the responsibility of the task to read this interrupt flag and terminate itself cleanly. If the task does not handle the interrupt flag correctly, then the responsiveness of the use case will suffer. The example that we saw on the screen is of the case where the use case needs to return immediately on any child failure. That's reasonable. But the structured task scope can handle other use cases as well. What if you want to return with the first successful task? What if you want to return only when all of the tasks are completed, success or failure? What if you want to roll your own version of the structured task scope? All of these are handled beautifully by the structured task scope. In summary, here are some of the advantages of using structured task scope. The code is easy to understand because no matter which use case, the code looks the same. Child threads are cleanly terminated in case of failure or cancellation at the appropriate time. There are no unnecessary hanging threads around. And lastly and most importantly, using structured task scope with virtual threads implies there is no scalability issues associated with blocking. It's no wonder that by default, the structured task scope uses virtual threads under the hoods. Now, if you like this video, press the like button and subscribe to my channel for more insightful videos.